Um, but anyway, let's get back to Kelsey. Kelsey, do you want to, and we hopefully Kelsey, we'll have a few more people. <laughs> okay, us. yeah. Um, but do you want to talk to us a little bit about your background, what you do kind of in your day-to-day -day job? Yeah, okay. So not sure quite where to start, but I'll kind of start at the beginning. I love, I loved art growing up. My dad, I was around artists, like my dad was a painter. My, both my parents did musician, music stuff. And, um, so I wanted to do art. So my senior year of high school, I took a black and white photo class at Richland College in Dallas. And I like fell in love with photography. And I, I had taken pictures before, but like not the dark room. Like I, I just really fell in love with that process and that hands on process. And so after high school, I decided um, that I wanted to go to UNT for photography. So I went there. Um, and I graduated with a BFA in their photo department. Um, and it was great. It was very, very art gallery based and still is. Um, and I do mostly commercial photography. So I didn't learn a lot about commercial photography in college, but we had one class, it was like a professional goals class. And um, our professors like pushed us to do something that would further our careers after school. So um, I, one of my projects was I made a website, which back in 2007 was like kind of hard to do, believe it or not. Now you guys are lucky because there's Squarespace and all of that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so I made a website and then I also contacted several photographers in New York city whose work that I loved. And I asked them if I could go there for the summer and, um, uh, assist them or intern for them for free. So two of them actually responded and I wound up interning the summer between my junior and senior year of college. And, um, I learned so much about photography, the business side of photography and commercial photography from them. So they were, um, one of them was a food photographer and one of them was a fashion photographer. Um, both pretty naturally lit styles, not a whole lot of studio lighting, but I learned about the business side of commercial photography because I helped them calculate their business receipts and, um, you know, I mean, they were still shooting film then, so I would help them with their contact sheets and things like that, um, run errands and sometimes have to get coffee for them. But like, it was really awesome. And that's where I learned a lot about commercial photography. So when I got out of school, I went back to school for my last year. And then when I got out of school, I wanted to move to New York City and I really wanted to do fashion photography. And I, um, I moved three weeks after I graduated and that summer was really great. I assisted, I assisted, I started off assisting like many photographers do. Um, I also prop style assisted. So that was a way that was really cool because I got into the shoots, but I wasn't under the photographer. So I met people that I needed to meet in the industry, but I wasn't, you know, stepping on the toes of the person I was working for trying to get photo jobs. Um, because if you're an assistant, you don't really want to steal clients from the person that you're working for. Um, quick, so that quick was question, Kelsey. Of, yeah. Um, cause I, I try to like tell my students that, you know, like there's a, there's a whole bunch of different types of jobs that are available out yes. there. You know, you're not, you're not just going to be like a freelance photographer and you just talked about being like, you know, a, an assistant stylist. Could yes. you, could you kind of expound upon how you would get those gigs or how the stylist would get those gigs and you would kind of assist with them? Yeah, so I, um, so as far as working with stylists, are you guys familiar with, like, the job description of, like, a stylist? Yeah. Okay, okay. So, um, so I just emailed people. Honestly, like, I found, like, I would go through magazines. I love editorial work, and so I would go through magazines, and if you look in the gutter of the magazine, which is, like, the binding part, like a lot of times if it's not on the main page, it would be in the gutter of like, who is the stylist? Who was the food stylist? Who was the prop stylist? Uh, who was the photographer, et cetera. So anytime that I saw work that I loved, I would write down that name, look them up on the internet, look them up on email or on their, if their email was on the website, then I would just email them and say, Hey, I am a photographer I just moved to New York and it doesn't you don't have to be in I mean you can do that anywhere like Dallas has so many photographers um mm -hmm. 
And so like, honestly, it was a lot of cold, cold emails. Um, and but, but those paid off. Yeah. And I think that one piece of advice that I got from the photographer I worked for was that if people don't respond, it has, it's not personal. It has nothing to do with you. You just have to keep after them because they're busy and like, they might have like, they might be juggling jobs and like your email slips through the cracks or they're like, Oh, I need to respond. And they just forget. And then if you send them a second follow up, like it's not annoying, like, you know, don't email them every day for two weeks, but like if they haven't responded in five days, just email them again. Like, yeah. and I found that to be true. Cause a lot of times the second time that I emailed somebody, they were like, Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like, it doesn't hurt anything to yeah, email them yeah. a second time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. So I, I had interrupted you when you were kind of talking about that part, but do you remember where you were in your detailing your career a little bit before I interrupted you? Oh, no. Um, let's see. So, yeah. So I was in New York and uh, working for those. I was assisting. And then in 2008, the economy crashed, right. which hopefully, well, I don't know. Right. <laughs> we might be dealing with that again. Um, but I, I really had a hard time getting work and I decided to move back to Dallas. And um, because I had gone to UNT, a lot of the people in the design program there were in junior level art director jobs in Dallas. And so I had those connections. So that's another thing too. If you guys know like designers or people that like design or illustration, like keep in contact with them because those are the people that can hire you later if you want to do commercial stuff. That's good. Um, so as they moved up in their jobs, I kind of moved up in, in my job. Um, so yeah, so I moved back to Dallas and then there was one girl that I went to school with that kept asking me to shoot a uh, concept work, which is not the actual advertisement, but it is what the ad agency would use to pitch to the client. So we might shoot things three different ways and then they would present that to the client. And so I did a lot of that stuff because um, I just you know needed the money and it, it, I wanted to do fashion photography um, but in New York and then even back in Dallas, I quickly learned that it's actually, I hope this isn't a negative thing because definitely go for it if you want to, but a lot of people want to shoot fashion because it's glamorous and cool and, um, it's harder to make money. Um, it's fashion. harder because everybody wants to do it. Everybody will do it for nothing or a couple hundred bucks. It's just really hard to make a living. So my friends in Dallas, a lot of the agencies that they were with had a lot of food clients and they kept asking me to shoot concept work and I would do it because I needed the money. Um, but I always wanted to shoot people. I really wanted to shoot people. And, but then I started to really like food. And for me, like, it's kind of like fashion in that you're dressing up something um, and you're still making it look beautiful, but it's actually, Honestly, I mean, some people would say it's not easier. Some, I would say it's a little easier because you don't have to deal with like a model. You don't have to deal with their like usage fees or um, their attitudes or yeah. I don't know. And the fashion industry can be a little catty and the uh, food industry is a little nicer. So I enjoy that. So what, what are some of the, the bigger clients you've worked for as far as food stuff goes? Yeah, so probably the biggest job that I've had to date was a couple years ago, actually, because um, usually I just get hired for one day, one, two day shoots. Um, but this was a five day shoot for seven up. So we did um, 35 recipes that you can use seven up um, with uh, to make in the recipe. And we shot each recipe three different ways. So it was like, and there was a video production. I was not on the video production, but there was a video production going at the same time. So it was like mass chaos, but we got through it and it was super fun. We had a great team of people and I love all the imagery that we got. So that's probably been my biggest, I guess, client. And I still shoot for, um, like I did a job this year for Dr. Pepper, um, which it was Dr. Pepper Snapple, but now I think it's keurig dr pepper like oh i did not keurig. know that uh, yeah <laughs> so um so you yeah. do a lot of a lot of stuff with drinks too yeah i do yeah food and beverage and i still do some lifestyle i um i have a couple of fashion clients 
Um, one is this Mexican dress line called Mi Golandrina out of Dallas. And then I shoot for a couple of other stores um, around Dallas. So yeah, that's, so that's cool. kind of where I am today. I'm, you know, I still, I love what I do. I, I think that being a photographer is awesome. So, I mean, if y'all are interested, go for it. Um, I think that's good advice. Yeah. Um, I, when we've got Nathan joining us too, um, can I ask you a couple questions and, and students jump in with your questions. We've got just a few of you, so feel free to jump in at any point. Yeah, ask um, me. So since you do food stuff and you kind of come with a little bit of a styling background, do you do your own styling when you're on shoots? Good question. So sometimes yes, most of the time no. Most of the time there is an actual prop stylist in the mix of people that are working together. So I will um, let them do their thing because they're talented and amazing. Yeah. But if it's a lower budget shoot and they can't afford to hire a stylist, I will do styling. So I have a studio full of props and surfaces. The love hate relationship with lugging stuff around, but yeah. You, <laughs> yeah. Is it your own personal studio or do you work out of a studio in Dallas? Uh, I It's mine, but I share it with one other person. So I, okay. I share it with a florist. So she's always got fresh flowers in there, which is awesome. And that is cool. Yeah. Um, how much, when, can I ask how much you would pay a stylist if you were hiring them on for a shoot for like a, it yeah, depends so, on the gig. Yeah. So food stylists in Dallas are kind of like, they all get together and raise their rates together. Mm. So their rate is always the same and it's a, they make $1,100 a day for an eight hour day. So it's pretty good money. <laughs> it's really good money actually. Yeah. And, um, that's for food styling. And then for prop styling anywhere from six to $800 a day. Um, and they would do, um, that would be onset days, but they would also have pull and return days. So they would be hired for more days than just the shooting day, um, to pull all of the clothing and whatnot. Right. Get everything prepared. Yeah. And, yeah. So when you're, when you're like hire getting these gigs, are you going through that agency that we talked about earlier that you would do like the, the spec work for? Are the concept work for, or are, are you finding these jobs yourself? Um, yeah, another good question. So it's probably, it depends on what year of my career. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like when I first started, I was definitely going after a lot of jobs myself. Um, and that's, you know, just like emailing for assistant jobs, that's emailing agencies and saying like, hey, can, um, you know, I'd love to come in and show you my portfolio and talk with you about working with you guys sometime. So that helps get the word out. But also the girl, well, the one girl that worked with me um, or I was friends with in college um, a lot of art directors hop around to different agencies. They don't stay, some do stay for long periods of time, but at the beginning, what would happen is they would say like, Hey, Kelsey can shoot this thing. And then they would wind up leaving that agency. And I would have met all of the other people at that agency. So they would continue to hire me, but then the other person would be at a new agency and yeah. then I would get jobs with them. So like, it's a network of just like, who you know. I mean, you right. have to be good at what you do, but a lot of it is like making those connections and stuff. So now I feel like a lot of times people people know me. I'm still a younger photographer, um, just in the gen generally, generationally speaking, um, in the food industry. Um, most of the people in Dallas doing that are probably in their 60s. Um, okay. Yeah, and a lot of them are starting to retire. So if you're interested in food photography, um, also if you're a female, <laughs> because they're like all males. So like, it's kind of nice because I feel like as they start to retire, they're gonna need more like photographers. So I'm kind of in this really good place um, because there's not very many people. I'm in my early 30s, or I guess about to be mid 30s, but like that's, you know, a good, it's just a good age because there's not a lot of people shooting food that age. And you're old enough for people to take you seriously. You're not like, you know, yes. not, not yeah. that it's wrong to be in your early twenties. Y'all don't get this. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. Um, but, uh, and I, I do here in a minute, I, I definitely want to hear a question from Savannah and I definitely want to hear a question from Maddie. So I hope they're prepping questions right now. I saw their eyes uh, <laughs> peer up when I said that. Um, but could you kind of, having worked in New York and also in Dallas, could you kind of compare and contrast 
working in both of those two locations yeah. for us a bit? Uh, yeah. Um, so let's see. I actually would say I prefer working in Dallas um, because cars are easier to have. Um, so logistically speaking, when you are a photographer and you do have to lug equipment, um, lugging stuff via cabs and subway, it sucks. <laughs> um, and when you get to a certain point, you can have somebody else do it for you, but there's a lot of um, things that you have to do yourself at first. So that's pretty hard. Um, I would also say there's definitely more opportunity in New York. So that's a plus for New York. But because there's more opportunity, the market of photographers is definitely more saturated. So it's kind of a give and take. In Dallas, I would say, yeah, there's still a decent amount of photographers. But there's like the ratio of work to photographers is so much better. Yeah. Um, and sometimes they will in Dallas, they might fly somebody in from like LA or New York to do a shoot, but most of the time they hire local. And so I found that as far as like making money and getting jobs, it's been way easier for me to do that in Dallas than in New York. That's awesome. Okay. I like to hear that. Cause I always tell my students that that are wanting to go to New York or something like that. Like, well, there's, there's jobs here too. Yeah. Or other places. And so. I will say too, because the market is so saturated up there, like the food photographer that I worked for up there, uh, I asked her one time how much food stylist rates were um, in New York versus Dallas, and they are about three to four hundred dollars less a day in New what? York. And that's wow. it's crazy, but it's because there's so many more food stylists. There's really only I would say fourteen, maybe fourteen really good food stylists in Dallas. And in New York, there's prob I mean, there's tons. Yeah. And so, like, they're all fighting for that work. And, um, yeah, so it's surprising because it's a more expensive place to live and you're not making as much. Right. Um, all right, I'm going to ask you one more question for me, uh, and then I'll, I'll kick it over to, to Maddie or Savannah or Tim. Um, but uh, so you, you went to UNT, um, mm -hmm. you know, then they – where that's close and I, I'm not sure where uh Savannah's going but I, and I think Maddie's trying to go to SCAD um yeah, oh she, she's pointing to her banner oh I see your that. sign up there yeah <laughs> um but I, I always um push UNT's new design management program to my students um but would you and I know you talked about not necessarily UNT's photo program getting students ready for the real world um would you encourage students to be photo majors at UNT or no? It all depends on what your goal is. Um, I would say I am super glad that I went to UNT, even though the photo department didn't fully prepare me for the commercial world. I feel like the advantages to going to UNT was the whole, um, I guess, liberal arts curriculum. Yeah. Um, because, you know, I had to take history of photography. I had to take art histories. I had to take painting. I had to take drawing and all of those like things that you learn art wise, like how to describe art, all of those things get me a leg up on commercial photography that I feel like some commercial schools don't talk about. They will talk about the technical aspects of things, but they don't talk about describing light. Like they don't talk about um, and that's not every, every school is not going to be like that. Um, that's a generalized statement, but I think for the most part, um, commercial schools can kind of leave out the art <laughs> of photography. Oh, that totally makes sense. Yeah. So it's I think back, well rounded like, background. Yes. And so I think if you're very motive, if you're self motivated, it really doesn't matter what school. Be because you you're saying have. you would be doing work on your own outside of school. Yeah. 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 So I would say, like the things that I didn't learn in U at UNT was um, I didn't learn a lot about equipment. Granted, when I was there, I only had, I graduated with like one digital class. <laughs> so I still was kind of in that weird like transitional phase of like, it was all film. And then in the first three years I was out of school, it was all digital. So I had to learn a lot of that stuff on my own anyway. Yeah. So I'm sure it's a little different now because they do start with digital right away. What what year did you graduate from UNT? 2008. Okay, I graduated from 2000 there in 2007. Oh, okay, that's crazy. I know. it's so weird how you don't really know anybody 
you didn't know anybody in that wasn't in your like grade level or right and that, that's strange yeah, that, yeah that is weird. So weird. Um, uh, i think i think will was really shy though and he just like oh. tucked away in a corner <laughs> I, was, I, was also an, I was also an english in major comedy so. club. oh <laughs> you were what i said i was also an english major so yeah oh, oh that's why i just <laughs> yeah that's why <laughs> but yeah i would say that the like the more commercial schools wouldn't wouldn't tap into the artsy artsiness as much um so yeah there's give and take to both really that's good that's good um let's see hey maddie uh i think you were about to ask a question and then you muted your mic oh i was just saying that your creative writing degree didn't help you with naming photography oh yeah thank, th thank you for picking on me about that but did you have a, a question for for kelsey um actually i was gonna ask about what she just finished talking about because i know like before I start school, I'm trying to like dip into a bunch of different types of art so that it can help me with photography. So I was just going to ask like what art form does she think helped her the most with photography? Excellent question. That's a really good question. Um, I would think honestly design one and design, design two um, because that's where we learned about the elements and principles of design and all of that translates into photography, like light, color, shape, rule of thirds, like composition. Um, and I think me being able to articulate my work with art directors and communicate that clearly is super helpful. Um, I also think, I'm trying to, yeah, because we dealt with uh, 2D and 3D design, and so it was helpful to learn about that, because even though a picture is technically 2D, it deals with 3D things. So, um, yeah, I would say that for sure. That's good. That's good. Hey, Savannah, I'm going to pick on you now. Um, we were talking about your lens earlier, but do you have a question for Kelsey? Uh, I do have one about studios. Like, do you guys know like an average price for like Dallas studios to rent them out? Rent? It's better for me to have my own than to use someone else's. Yes. So that depends on how much you're shooting. I, so my studio is there, I don't know if you're familiar with the Oak Cliff part of Dallas, but um, it's basically like live workspaces. Um, so it's kind of like studio apartments. Some people live in them, some people office out of them. Um, and it's just one big open room with windows. I shoot a lot of natural light, so that's perfect for me. Um, but I still rent bigger studios because my studio that I have where I keep all my gear and props and things, it's really only big enough to do lower budget editorial stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice thing that I can offer to clients because I have a space to shoot in. But, um, but yeah, I still have to rent a space for bigger commercial shoots. Um, and I just personally don't want the overhead because it's expensive. And so, okay, so an average um, studio, I would say on the cheaper end, it might be four to $500 a day. And I think on the more expensive end, it would be a thousand. Mm -hmm. um, and that's probably eight to 10 hour days. Um, but that, um, but I mean, if you own your own studio, it's just like the bills, like the internet, the AC, like everything just adds up. And so yeah. it's just, and oh, that's what I was gonna say, is that like, when you get to a certain point, you pass that cost off to your client anyway. So like you, when you're making an estimate for a job, you would say my studio is, you would have a line item on your estimate that said my studio is X amount of dollars. Um, and you know if they're going to approve the estimate they're going to wind up paying for that anyway mm -hmm. so when you own your own studio you can still pass that cost off to your client but you might give it to them at a lower rate to like help them out but you're still making you might make some money off your rent that month so i, I would i would say a lot of the younger generation and i would include myself in that um don't own their own studios they usually rent them um, just because the overhead is a lot. And I don't have an actual number on what that overhead would be, but it would be a lot. Yeah, I think she, she asked that because last week we were talking to uh, Wesley Kirk, who's in Fort Worth, and he was building his own studio in his in his backyard from like what used to be a, a guest house, I think. Oh, that's cool. 
yeah that's awesome that was kind of cool yeah. um cool well let's see kelsey any any last minute thoughts or anything uh, anything that you feel like we should have covered but didn't one thing i did write down that i a piece of advice that a photographer told me when i was first starting out um was she said on average it takes three to five years of doing what you're trying to do mm. to make a living to make a successful like living like that you're paying all your bills that you're doing you're doing good um or you're able to save a little money so like i i really found that to be really helpful because then i didn't feel so bad if i had a part-time job at a clothing store while i was trying to do photography on the side um and i really found that to be true i think year three or four like i started to turn a corner where i was like okay i can cut back on my part-time job hours and i'm really starting to like be able to do this full time so don't get discouraged if it takes a while you just have to keep going and just like you need to keep emailing people if they're not responding, like it's the same kind of concept, like just keep going. Cause eventually the jobs yeah. will come if you're yeah. putting in the efforts and have the skills. That's excellent. That's yeah. excellent. Um, well, I, I recorded this, Kelsey, are you cool with us posting this yeah. later on YouTube? Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah that's fine. Um, well, I, I got, I got a quick question. Can yeah, I jump into? Does it, does anybody else have any questions though, before I jump into? Uh, I have one. My Go mom ahead. gave me a little note cause she asked a question. She did this. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Wait, what does it say? Hold on. I, it's small. Wait. I can see if I can. I can oh, okay. Ask about the She said something. Ah, uh, okay. It's a good yes. question. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so I also think that just, just depends on your personality. Like, I really loved philosophy. And I wanted to go to a regular four year college because I like wanted to minor in something else other than art. Um, so if you love art and you want to live and breathe that, like, that's great. But like, for me, I wanted, this sounds nerdy, but like I wanted to write papers um, <clears throat> and to kind of have two different sides of my brain working at the same time. But I also think like, so, I would recommend college. I think it's great, but also I feel like you guys, you your age has an advantage with technology. That like if you are super self motivated, ah, I hate saying this because I don't like. I want to encourage people to go to college, but if you're super self motivated and you're a good learner on your own, like you should start now. Like there are some like. There's this girl, um, have you heard of Lauren Withrow? I haven't, no. She's a fashion photographer out of Dallas and she started when she was like 17 and she started shooting these models um, uh, in Dallas from this modeling agency and like her work is phenomenal and like she didn't go to college and she just kept kept at it and kept doing test shoots and stuff and then got, I think, I think she lives in New York now. I haven't looked at her stuff in a while but you should look her up so. Um, I, I honestly just think it depends on like what you, what you want to do. Mm -hmm. I hope that helps. I don't know. Okay. Thank you. Tim, back to you. Okay. All right. So my question was very similar to what Savannah, what you just brought up, um, kind of talking about photography education. Um, can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I'm in my car. Um, so with photography education, um, I know that I've attended a couple of sort of like outings with other photographers. Um, where it's kind of a collective of maybe a dozen photographers and we go to the mountains and shoot and, and talk about the business of photography and things like that. And I learned a lot more about photography and running a business from those other photographers than I did, honestly, from a semester at college sometimes. Um, do you have any thoughts on that or any yeah. like, recommendations for, for, some groups to join yeah um let's see i don't i don't know if i have any recommendations for groups necessarily but okay. um i agree with you i would say like as far as business goes it's like i kind of wish i had taken like a business class and that might be a plus one for a four-year mm -hmm. college um instead of like just a photography school um because i feel like 
I wish I had taken some business classes because I really didn't learn very much from college regarding that. I learned that more in internships. Um, as far as groups, I'm not sure, but there are a lot of awesome studios in the area that do um, group-like things. Like they might have workshops. Um, one that comes to mind is the TX Studio. It's really close to my house. It's a natural light studio in um, Tyler Station in Oak Cliff. And they have, they have meetups, they have shows, they have, they actually have an internship program um, where you get free studio. I think it's like a couple months and you get like a couple of free studio shoots and then they have a show at the end. It's like a residency, creative re residency and they have a show and then like you meet people from your show from the work that you created while you had the residency. So stuff like that I think is popping up more. So that might be kind of like a group kind of thing, but yeah. Right. Um, it's just it, kind of like a networking opportunity. It's an opportunity. Yeah. I know that some of the people that I met on those oh outings, <laughs> <laughs> uh, some of the people I met on those outings, they kind of become, you know, close friends um, yeah. or they, I don't know, they, they're really, people are really willing to share. Um, and part of that, maybe like the industry that they, that they worked in um, where it was like the wedding industry or, or, you know, couples and engagements, which is i mean similar in business i mean you're working with a client and you're working with their needs um but also like you were saying earlier it's it's kind of a different ball game working with people working mm -hmm. with models and their rates and their personalities and running a photo shoot with a, a person uh versus photographing you know still life and and and, and food um not that it's easier any other way it's just a different ball game and yeah. Yeah. so um some of those outings were all about like, this is how you talk to people and treat people and interact with them and get their personality out. Like yeah. you can imagine if your, if your food had to give you personality, you, you know, without the use of a stylist, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's I, kind of a different ball game. Yeah, I think so. I think people skills are huge um, in right. photography. Like, and yeah, I think, I mean, it's the same, even though, like, if you're not talking to a model, you still have to talk to an art director, or you still have to have good, right. like, email etiquette, and those are all going to get you really far, um, the more skill you have in that, but yeah, I think those groups are super helpful. I think, too, just from listening to you say that, it um, just reminds me that, like, I think that there's just there's sometimes there's a weird competition in this industry. A lot of art industries are like that. And I think I've tried to place my business practices on, I don't know, just be nice and share with other people what you know, because there's truly enough work for everybody. And if you're good at what you do, like there's enough work for everybody. So don't like, you know, it's super like, yeah, sorry, I'm tripping over my words, but back to New York, it's like, um, you know, it's just pretty cutthroat. Everybody's out to get you. And it's mm -hmm. like, I don't want to live my life like that. So I think, and I think that other people will notice that. And I think it'll get you farther than you think. Awesome. That's good. Uh, yeah. And I put in the comments, uh, a group that I've always wanted to go, uh, check out. They used to meet out in Marfa, um, but it looks like their next one is in Washington state. Uh, when the world eventually gets back to normal. Yeah. Um, but cool. All right. Well, Kelsey, really, thank you so much once again yeah. for taking the time out of your day to, to talk with us. Um, and, and yeah, that's it. What, what's your Instagram in case any of them? Oh, want to yeah, it's Kelsey Foster Photography. Okay. Kelsey Foster Photography, all spelled out. And I'll, I'll put it up on ours, link to it in case anybody else wants to. And um, don't judge me on my Instagram stories right now because I am having fun in the quarantine times. So it'll go back to normal <laughs> later. So don't judge. Those. Good to know. Good to know. They're all tongue in cheek. Nothing is for serious. Are all of your jobs like for the foreseeable future canceled? Yeah. yeah um, canceled or postponed. And I've, uh, my food stylist actually lives down the street from me and we've decided to be each other's quarantine buddies. So we're working on some personal work right now, which is keeping us busy. So we might drum up some business that like from companies that would send us product and have like no contact situations. But yeah, it's, that's the importance of saving your money because you never know when a pandemic's going to hit. There you, there you go. Also good advice. Uh, so we're, we're doing this every Wednesday, Kelsey. Next Wednesday, we're going to talk with 
uh, Timmy Coker, and then I, I know we've got Roger Peters from Equilateral Films lined up for the future too. So if you want to drop in on any of the future okay, meetings, the same it, link at four. I know it, it'll be an, it'll be a new link, but I can I can oh, send okay. it to you. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. If I can come, that'd be awesome. Yeah, cool. And can, hopefully we're not doing this in more than a month, but it looks like we are. But oh well. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, thanks everybody for dropping Bye. by. Bye. Have a good rest of your day. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you later.